Okay, <clears throat> again, uh, today is May 10th, 2023, and we'll talk now about Henri Sauvage, an architect who was born on uh, May 10th, but in 1873. Uh, let's, um, uh, let's read a little bit about him. Henri Sauvage, May 10th, 1873 in Rouen, and died in March 21st, 1932 in Paris. Was a French architect and designer in the early 20th century. He was one of the most important architects in the French Art Nouveau movement, Art Deco, and the beginning of architectural modernism. He was also a pioneer in the construction of public housing buildings in Paris. His major works include the Art Nouveau Villa Mayorel in Nancy, France, and the Art Deco building of the La Samaritaine department store in Paris, a very famous building, La Samaritaine. Even Kazuyo Sejima, about whom I, I, mean, I mentioned her today, she did some work there recently. Henri Sauvage studied architecture at the Ecole Nationale Supérieure de Beaux-Arts from 1892 to 1903. My God, my God, 11 years. In the course of, uh, in the course taught by Jean-Louis Pascal, but quit the school before receiving a diploma and described himself as, as self-taught in architecture. I like this. So another not architect. He associated with and became friends with many leading figures in the new movements in architecture and the decorative arts, including the rationalist architect Franz Jourdain, uh, himself an important architect, 1847-1935, the furniture designer Louis Majorel, 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 I don't know very well how to pronounce, the painter and furniture designer Francis Jourdain, the son of Franz Jourdain, the architects Hector Guimard and Auguste Perez. Beautiful. So here he was in a book on the left with a hat on his head, like a true architect. By the way, Le Corbusier uh, was reluctant to take his hat off when he was in a room with uh, many monks, Dominican monks, you know, uh, studying the plans for uh, Ronchamp or uh, La Tourette, especially La Tourette. I, I like to imagine that Henri Sauvage did take his hat off. He did here in this picture, although there are no monks around him. Henri Sauvage, some drawings by him. Now, you know, this is not really Art Nouveau, but it's, it's, it's actually a very robust uh, architecture and uh, monumental, uh, ziggurat-like. He didn't build it, but I'm sure he regretted he didn't build it. And I regret it too. It would have been quite, a, quite an addition to the, to the large entities, constructive entities that make a shadow on this earth. What was this supposed to be? I think a hotel. But uh, in my opinion, it's actually better than the, the narrow, thin uh, triangular uh, pyramid that uh, Herzog and de Moron uh, proposed for Paris. Although there is here, you know, tentative towards the triangle and the pyramid also. Well, it's a ziggurat or like the pyramid in Saqqara by uh, Imhotep, the first uh, genius in, uh, in, uh, in, in the world as we know it. Imhotep, the, you know, the first architect and the architect of uh, uh, Pharaoh Soser. He built a step pyramid of Saqqara but here we have some kind of a step, it's some kind of a ziggurat, but modern through and through. Uh, cour interior, cave, escalier, that's about it. Uh, terre plein de la piscine. Uh, you see, he was a visionary. He was, a, after all, he was a man who left school before finishing it because uh, that kept him tensioned enough, I mean, you know, uh, uh, sufficiently uh, unresolved in order to create forever. But he built a lot. I mean, if he arrived to uh, uh, designing uh, 
one part of La Samaritan. He didn't design the whole building, but that was a major work. Uh, Villa Mayorel, Mayorel, 1898-1902, uh, uh, with an architect d'exécution, a sculptor, a decorateur, and a ceramist. Well, the last three functions for us are totally irrelevant. Do we work today with a sculptor? No. Do we work today with a decorateur? Not really. Do we work with a ceramist? Definitely not. This is the building. Not bad. I mean, you know, it's a building that uh, the minimalists might consider uh, obscene. <laughs> But it's not obscene. It's 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 you know it's a rich building. It's 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 a nice villa. Um, uh, here we see some so-called Art Deco and some uh, you know Art Nouveau. I wouldn't mind living here. To be honest with you. Henri Sauvage. I and mean, look at this, look at this chimney. Look at the stained glass windows. Look at the artworks, you know, at that place where the, the world meets the ceiling, which is curved with paintings. And, uh, but planting the chimney in this way, in the middle of the room is rather unusual, but I don't dislike it at all. After all, it is about fire, and fire is supposed to be at the heart of a building. Frank Lloyd Wright knew it too, and so did Godfrey Semper. But if you allow me now to mention Epimetheus, because we know that fire came to the humans from Prometheus. Prometheus stole the fire from the gods and gave it to the humans. And thus we arrived at Hector, at, uh, I almost said Hector Guimard to Henri Sauvage. But I discovered in a play by Goethe called Prometheus that actually Prometheus had a brother. And his brother was named Epimetheus. And this is very interesting because the, the Greeks thought of two brothers. Prometheus in Greek means the one who first thinks. And then he acts. In other words, the planner. In a way, the architect. But Epimetheus was exactly the opposite. And in Greek, Epimetheus means the one who first acts and then he thinks. I'm sure both uh, priests would have loved Epimetheus. Why? Because when I when I um, had a discussion with both priests via Skype. I asked him, what do you recommend students in architecture and architects? And he said, don't think. In other words, be Epimetheus-like. Another very interesting thing is that Prometheus loved the human beings, but didn't care about the gods or nature. While Epimetheus was the very opposite. He didn't care much about the humans, but he had reverence for the gods and he loved plants, animals, and stones. I think Epimetheus is very, very relevant for our time. Although he appears to be irresponsible because he first acted and then he was thinking. Uh, it's fascinating the pair, Prometheus and Epimetheus. It's also very telling that Goethe named his play Prometheus and not Prometheus and Epimetheus, but he mentions Epimetheus in this play. And that's, that's how I found out about Epimetheus. Anyway, Henri Sauvage, l'architect. architect who collaborated with the sculptor, with the le decorateur, and with the ceramist. Nice.
I mean, you know, I, I'm intrigued by this uh, chimney, you know, this uh, fireplace. It's, 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 it's sculptural, it's intriguing, it's even burlesque a little bit, it's, it's meaningful. It's not just, you know, uh, we think today about fire only in the utilitarian terms, you know, and to be correct, to respect the requirements of the fire department and so on. We don't think any longer in mythical terms or symbolic terms. No, no, <laughs> nothing could be more removed from us than to think about fire the way, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the, in this case, uh, Henri Sauvage uh, thought. Or, uh, you know, I know other examples, including Gaudi, because, uh, the, you know, the, the chimneys uh, uh, above his uh, apartment uh, buildings in, in Barcelona are uh, monuments of uh, um, expression and symbolism. And so uh, they are at Chambord. But we don't think in these terms. We are utilitarian risks. You know, we, we only look at the face value of things. Forget about symbol, forget about myth, forget about uh, Epimetheus and forget about Prometheus. Ah, our life is so boring, really, because of this. Immeuble de rapport. Première collaboration avec Charles Sarrazin. Immeuble d'habitation à bon marché. Paris again. Here it is. I wonder how he was allowed to build, you know, considering that he didn't uh, get the diploma. You know, they, that would be inconceivable, inconceivable in our country. And maybe in some other countries as well. Uh, rather vigorous uh, architecture. This is not, uh, you know, an architecture of, uh, of uh, pointillism. Rue Logier. Henri Sauvage. Nice and clean. Villa Natasha. Rue d'Espagne, Biarritz. Now this one is a little bit, uh, you know, picturesque. Maybe a little bit too picturesque for our taste today. But the, the time when it was built, I guess it was okay. But remember his uh, utopian uh, projects that we saw at the very beginning and those drawing, drawings. I guess he, like many architects, he had troubles to marry his uh, heroic uh, visions with the realities of uh, building in, uh, in, you know, in the place and in the time uh, when he was uh, active as an architect. But refurbished, very clean, the buildings, I'm sure very comfortable. And laying on that bed, reading a good book on Henri Sauvage would probably uh, double the pleasure. Immeuble d'habitation à bon marché, again, Boulevard de l'Hôpital. Uh, here it is, not bad. A vigorous building. Usually the word uh, vigorous doesn't uh, come to mind uh, immediately when you think of Art Nouveau, which is rather, it's about fluidities and lyricism and nature and flowers. But here we see a very robust cultural uh, architect and architecture. Another villa, Villa Marco, 1908. In these villas, he becomes more picturesque and more adventurous. And more capricious. Henri Sauvage. You know what is interesting is that um, I had a discussion with Bernard Chumi, who was and is one of the avant-garde architects of our time. And 
by the way, he was influenced by Yakov Chernikov, whom I presented the other day. But he told me, to my surprise, that uh, Bozar, the school of, uh, you know, they call the, the Bozar, the Bozar uh, I mean, when I, when I told him that I wanted to talk about important schools of architecture in the world, and, uh, you know, I thought of, uh, um, you know, Cooper Union and uh, Columbia University, uh, CyArc, AA, Bartlett, and he mentioned what about... Um, um, you know, uh, not he didn't ask, ask me a question. He mentioned also the Col de Bozar, which infuriated Louis Sullivan. But it's very interesting. Maybe the one who said we become what we hate said the truth because because you wouldn't expect an avant-gardist, you know, to notice the virtues of, a, of, of an educational system like uh, Bozar. And, but it's possible that you can, in, in fact, like uh, uh, Mark Foster Gage, in a way is bringing some kind of a Bozar mentality into the architecture of our time. And maybe we can find inspiration in the Bozar system for our time. Of course, there are danger, dangers there, you know, historicism and uh, uh, even dogma. But looking at the work of Henri Sauvage, uh, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe uh, it could be something liberating in the Bozar system for our time. At least, at least the cooperation again with the ceramist, the sculptor, and the decorateur which of course we don't think of, we didn't think of, and we don't think of for, for a long time. Well, maybe it's time to think of, again of, of, of such a collaboration. Hotel Triano, no pictures, Le Nouvel Hotel, de Nome aussi Hotel du Parc. Now, uh, I, I couldn't find all the, all the pictures all the time, as you can see. Uh, Palace Hotel, aujourd'hui Grand Hotel Al Sira, where is this in Mexico, Monterey? Uh, look at this. Talking about Bozar, this is more Bozar than uh, Art Nouveau, really. Is it a bad architecture because it's so ornamented and so heavy? I mean, so heavily ornamented? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, are our white walls is maybe cheaper, feel better? I'm not so sure at all. I mean, I don't know about these uh, colorful pieces of furniture, which could be, you know, could belong to the to the to le decorateur of the present. I don't know if that's how Henri Sauvage envisioned them. Now, who would expect who would expect such a building in Mexico? You know, designed by Henri Sauvage. I think even the Donald Trump would have liked this building with all his abhorrence towards the Mexicans. Very misplaced, of course. Henri Sauvage, Monterey, Mexico. Now, an immeuble de rapport, again in Paris, sa façade en gradin et l'appartement aménagé par François Jourdain servir de décor au of, of film Le Dernier Tango à Paris. Well, this movie must be seen now, no? Because we talked about Henri Sauvage and this is a famous uh, film, you know, The Last Tango in Paris. And, uh, you know, we read here that uh, there is an apartment in the film. I didn't see it in the movie, um, you know, uh, designed by Francis Jordan. And it was uh, part of the you know, the stage design, so to speak, of this film. Let's look at it. Here it is, a very fine building. Let's uh, read again. Immeuble de rapport. Rue Vavin, à Paris. The sixième uh, arrondissement, 1912-1913. Uh, so more than 100 years old. No, sorry, this is in Mexico. Here it is, the building. 
nice and clean and it does look like a, 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 a movie a movie building so to speak now look at this look at these things at the windows you know I mean who do something like this today very few people you know why, why did he need this because as Boileau said L'esprit de geometry needs l'esprit de finesse. That is, you know, ornament is needed. I mean, there are other ornamental things here. Discreet, but they are there. That's the building right here. Le dernier tango de Paris. The last tango, tango in Paris in a building by Henri Sauvage, the man who studied for 11 years without getting a diploma. I wonder, did he pay taxes for 11 years without a great, great immeasurable satisfaction of getting a diploma? Nice square also, not far from the building. I love this. Uh, living rooms of the of the outdoors as uh, Hannah Arendt would call them. Hannah Arendt uh, asked herself, I mean, no, uh, Hannah Arendt considered that uh, the charm of uh, Paris, which attracted so many great writers and, and, and painters and poets and musicians and so on at the turn of the century, the beginning of the 20th century, was, was because of this, that there were these uh, uh, I don't know, sometimes triangular, sometimes square, you know, such such uh, such spaces outside that acted kind of like uh, outdoor living rooms. The problem is that in, in the present, there are so many cars, although Paris is uh, fighting pollution, that this, this um, outdoor living rooms lost their charm because of the emissions of the cars and the multitude of the cars, the traffic, pollution and so on. But the observation of Hannah Arendt is probably worth, uh, worth uh, considering. I love the brickwork here, you know, white brick, but it's, it's very elegant. And we have white and blue and, you know, we are in Paris and, ah. Maurice Sauvage, bravo, monsieur. And the trees, what can we say? The world without trees would not be a world to live in. That's for sure. Let's keep every tree alive, alive. Magasin et immeuble de bureau. Pour Luis Majorel, Majorel, Majorel. Here it is. Innovative Henri Sauvage, actually, because there is monumentality here. There is modernity, there is vigor. Immeuble de bureau, bureau. Cinema, Gambetta, Paris, 1920. Uh, here it is. I didn't go to a cinema. <laughs> in many, many, many years. It must be nice actually to go. But the pleasure of going to a restricted movie for uh, teenagers while you are you're supposed to attend some boring classes in high school cannot be matched by anything. I mean, you leave the home to go to school and instead of going to school, you go to a cinema to see the beautiful Jean Moreau undressing a little bit. What, what course in any lycée or university can compete with that? None. That's the truth. Decorations, ornaments, references to some mythology, masks. Why not? Something we don't do these days because we have nothing to narrate. We only have blank white walls, a la David Chipperfield. Why he got a Pritzker Prize, I don't know. 
let's let's read what's written at the bottom. You know what's that? A graffiti of some sort. Quand je sors, je veux être libre, pas courageuse. Well, a lady wrote this. You know, she wants to go out and feel free, but not courageous. In other words, it's a protest against the danger, the dangers that um, you know uh, a, a lady could uh, face at night, even in Paris. I imagine that at night more than during the day. Quand je sors, je veux être libre. Je veux être libre, pas courageuse. Written on the cinema designed by Henri Sauvage. Happy birthday, Henri Sauvage. We are probably the only ones in the world who celebrate you today. Extension du magasin 2 et reconstruction du magasin 3 de la Sable Maritaine en collaboration avec, avec France Jourdain, 1925-1930. Uh, I think I have a plan here because he didn't build the whole of it. It was uh, so refurbished. This is a very famous uh, department store in Paris, Samaritan. I think it's called differently now because it was, I don't know, bought by, I don't know what company, but Samaritan is Samaritan. Uh, and uh, let's see if I have the plan here. I remember it didn't. Yes, here we see. Uh, I think he designed. It doesn't say. I forgot which part. He didn't design all of it. I think this one, number two, maybe this one, but not not this this part. I, I was hoping I had another image, another drawing where it said exactly where he built. But he, uh, Henri Sauvage is, uh, uh, you know, uh, acknowledged as one of the authors of, uh, of Le Samaritain. And here we see the various manifestations of, very, of this, you know, famous uh, department store in Paris. Not sure if he worked here or not. And he works, we worked with Franz Jourdain. Anyway, he is one of the authors of this very important department store in this very important city, which when I first visited kind of late in my life, I thought of writing a book called Paris, la plus médiocre ville du monde. And strangely, I intrigued some Frenchmen with this project, so to speak, which I never accomplished. But I thought of it, I don't know why, to write a book with the title Paris, la plus médiocre ville du monde. I was obviously unfair because then I rented a little chambre de bonne for a year, although I lived there only for two or three months. Samaritan, Henri Sauvage. Not bad if he designed this part, not bad at all. I guess that part is here. But it saddens me that I don't say which exactly, which part exactly he designed, Henri Sauvage. Immeuble de rapport et atelier d'artiste studio building. It's a studio building also in Paris. Well, who said that artists uh, benefit from suffering? Who would suffer in such a building? I mean, you could suffer in such a building when you don't have the money to pay the rent. But otherwise, you know, <laughs> long live art, long, long, uh, long be an artist. Uh, if you are an official artist, you probably have a good life. But most artists are unofficial. So what do you do with them? They are in the gutter. But as Oscar Wilde said, we are all in the gutter, but some of us look up to the, to the stars. Well, and usually exactly the artists or the poets, those who cannot pay the rent, they are in the gutter and look up to the stars. Studios for the artists, Henri Sauvage. 
interesting building. Let's face it. I wouldn't call it Art Nouveau though. <laughs> no, I don't know. In my opinion, a bourgeois lives here, not an artist. But it's nice. Let's 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 recognize it. I don't think uh, anyone would uh, would uh, reject the idea to live in such a in, in such an apartment. As opposed to Picasso, who had all the money in the world, but he didn't care at all about the environment he lived in. Even in his chateau, he had a whole castle, you know, his property. And, uh, you know, he had uh, chairs uh, without a seat, you know, broken, uh, broken furniture, but otherwise dressed uh, uh, with the most expensive pieces of clothing, but uh, horribly uh, matching each other. I, I I really feel like someone should write a book. I mentioned this before. The worst dressed man in the world. That is Pablo Picasso. <laughs> it's hard to imagine how a man who was a master of color would dress so horribly. I have pictures to prove what I said. Immeuble de rapport, le vert galant. <laughs> Le Ver Galon. Is it a green building? No, it's not, but it's honoring Le Ver Galon. Not bad. Let's, uh, let's say it. It's not a bad building at all. Maurice Sauvage, the man without a diploma. He loves steps. Even here, you see at the top of the building, he couldn't abstain from, uh, you know, stepping back a little bit. Fragments of, uh, of the ziggurat he always wanted to build. Henri Sauvage, in an old picture, look at the cars. Grand Magasin de Cré. Anant, the tree destroyed by Homo sapiens during the Second, Guerre, uh, Second World War. Hello, Vladimir Putin. Very modern. When was it built? 1931. Nant. I was changed something. Uh, I am a little bit confused about this building. Maybe they replaced what Sauvage did with another building and then that one was destroyed too. Because here you see a different... Uh... I, I couldn't solve the mystery which building actually he built. But apparently they all they are all destroyed. I guess this was the one built. And here we see some influences a little bit, but it's more radical than Auguste Perret. But this building, if this is the building he built, it's not bad at all. I don't uh, usually admire department stores, or it's a cinema. No, Grand Magasin. It's a department store, but uh, I think that's the one he built. But I don't know about the, the other ones. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It, this is a good building. It, and it doesn't exist because it was destroyed by Homo sapiens. But here we see in this picture, different building. Maybe this, this was built in lieu of the, of the, of the, of the, the other building, the, the one, the taller one, this one. Sorry about uh, my inability to be, uh, to know for sure what happened here. The Cré. That's it. So let's wish happy birthday to Henri Sauvage on this day of May 10th. 
uh, May 10th, uh, 19, uh, not 19, what am I saying? 2023. Thank you.